Hey, welcome, guys. Uh, today we're having a we have a special guest one more time, and today uh, Mr. Wu, who's an expert on vintage cameras, um, is going to discuss about Olympus cameras and a little bit of history of Olympus and how they compared to the rest of the competition back in the day, probably during the seventies uh, and mid seventies and eighties. Okay, without further ado, let's uh, talk to Mr. Wu. Okay, Mr. Wu. Okay. Thank you very much for yeah, helping us and teaching us a little bit about photography history. So what do we got here today with the Olympus? Okay, we have Olympus here. So, and beside the Olympus, you have a equally well-known Nikomat. The first thing you notice is that the size of the camera. Well, this was the average size of the SLR. It was a uh, right size, but a bit heavy. And you find that this Olympus is so much smaller. So Olympus started the revolution of the small size camera. After this, Olympus came out. Pentax came out with the small size series. Nikon also came out with the small, small size series, the FE, the FM, and so forth. Now, the Olympus, OM1 was originally called Olympus M1 and it made such a sensation in Photokina that Leica made a strong objection because Leica have the M series, the M1, M2, M3 and so forth. So Olympus have to change the destination to OM1. The OM1 is Olympus Mitani 1. Olympus, the Olympus company, M. Maitani, the name of the chief designer. And then Maitani and his team were responsible for the um, many range of compact Olympus camera. Before that, they have the Olympus half frame camera, the fixed lens pan series, and the only half frame SLR with changeable lens, the Olympus Pen F, Pen FT. Then after that, came this OM-1. It's a full frame SLR. So you see, it takes a full format, but in a small form factor. Uh, but not everything of this camera is small. You got a huge ISO DAR, and you got a huge reflex mirror, very big mirror. And the viewfinder image is big. If you compare, if you peep through, you find that you got a very big viewfinder image, very bright. And uh, to save space, instead of taking the top out and taking the screen out from the top, you can change the focusing screen from the inside. So you got a whole range of focusing screen to match the different lenses that you use. It's a full system camera. You could uh, put in the motor. Let's see, it is out. So, now, how Olympus managed to make this shorter is simple. A traditional SLR camera with a cloth shutter needed the ribbon on the top and the bottom to pull the curtain. So that ribbon take up the space, hence the height. So the height of the camera is determined by the shutter system. Now, what Olympus did, they dispense with the need of a ribbon in place of the ribbon the top and bottom are held by a silk cord a thread so you compare the ribbon and the thread so much smaller so the uh, the height of the camera is reduced drastically well you can use it standalone you got a shutter dial on the body like the Nikomak, which makes handling better it, rather than trying to turn the shutter speed on top. You got a light meter, very simple light meter with a plus minus in the middle. And it has been said by one publication that the, this light meter is as good as the Western Master light meter. So you can use it standalone, very small package. When you put it over your shoulder, you can hang it around the whole day. You don't feel the weight. And you can take picture, you got a mirror lockup, you got a sink, 
But if you like to take some sequence shot and you don't want to take, you can also put the motor. You can click on the motor winder or the motor drive and then you have motorized film winding. You also got a connection with this gear here and you can put a 250 film exposure back so you can shoot 250 shots at one go. So was this considered a professional line? Yeah, it is. It is a full, full uh, fledged professional series. Then this is the mechanical one, the OM1. Later on, they have the OM2. They introduce what is called the off the film metering. I'll show you what I mean. Now inside this small bag is my Olympus system. You see, it doesn't. If I were to put the other full size camera, it won't fit in so much. Uh, inside here, I have a compact Olympus rangefinder. I have the power bound script for flash. So the flash is a system. If you do a lot of copy work and you like low angle, you can put this. Uh, yeah, this you can have low angle. You can have multiple. Then you have the other two later Olympus. This is the OM4, another groundbreaking camera, and this is the OM2 SP. So you find that the lenses by Olympus are rather, relatively small, small size, but optically very good. So that is well, why is the Olympus OM4 the most sought after and yeah, the, expensive? The, uh, I think not so expensive, but uh, maybe they didn't. They didn't have. Did they have a T version? Yeah, they have a titanium. The and first one came out with the OM4 titanium, then the OM3 titanium. Basically, the titanium on the cosmetic side is just a top and bottom plate made of titanium, which makes it very uh, much lighter. But you don't feel it so much unless you put on the wing skill. You see, there's a weight a weight reduction. But more than a weight reduction, because titanium is used by aircraft to make the aeroplane light at the same time strong. So the body is strong at the same time being light. Then together with the OM4 titanium, they added another feature, which have uh, what we call a high-speed sync. So that was the first company to introduce high-speed sync or SRR. They popularized the TTL flash system. Like this one and their metering system is a uh, OTF off the film so let me illustrate the traditional camera the metering do the reading while before you take the picture so you, either you center the needle or the exposure system and when you push the shutter button halfway it memorizes the last reading and it based the exposure on the last reading but Olympus starts the metering at the moment of exposure, real time. So, in other words, we put a hypothetical case. We, 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 we look at a scene of a street, of, uh, street light, and then the camera do the metering. Let's see, I try to do a slow speed. Yeah, this is slow speed. Let's right, make it even slower, I point something dark, so it'll be super long. Yeah. Haven't closed yet. Yeah, now it closed. So you know it's, it's take a long time. But during this time, if somebody flash a big light, it will immediately react and shorten the time. So let's uh, try to do a demo. Okay, we have a bright light like this. Okay. So we take away the light. We meter with low light. Now we see what happened. The moment I introduced the light, the shutter closed straight away during the actual exposure. Or the other way around, you have a, low, red, a roll of light and half of them burn out. Then the camera will take a longer time to close. So it measures the light during the exposure. So for short exposure, they have a computer pattern here. This curtain, they have a random pattern. 
So the meter cell will take this random pattern and take a reading. But it is a long exposure. It will measure the light from the photo cell of the light reflected from the film. That is why they provide you with a card if you are just testing. So you put a card to simulate the film. Otherwise, you read the black, it gives a wrong reading. So with this one, when you put a long exposure, it reads the light reflected from the film. Then when it's enough, then it will shut down. OTF off the film. Real-time yeah. system. So it was the most accurate metering system available then. Then when they put the OM4, they put a three extra feature at that time unknown in other camera. You got a spot meter. So you measure only the central portion, but not just one spot. You can take random eight spots and you can click, click, click eight spots and the camera will average the light for you. Or if you are taking black against black, and you don't want it to turn gray, you use a spot meter, but you press shadow. When you press shadow, the, the computer in the camera will select the setting that renders the black black. On the other hand, if you are shooting white against white, white wall with a white uh, wedding gown, so you put highlight, then you make sure that the details are still found on the white. So you got this extra thing, so at that time, no other camera had then of course the rest are what what it is yeah wow amazing then small size so the all the om share the same lens system and when they have the program function on the om2 sp they added the program function but they did not to do anything extra to the lens the program function will still work so the lenses are very small and some are very unique, and I would say the optical quality uh, as good as the German brand. So that's it, Olympus, and you can build it up as a system. Let's say if you want to build a system for flash, so you can mount the flash either just on the camera here itself, or you can put this power bound grip so you can put the grip and you can also have TTL flash TTL flash you use this connector here and this connector here so let me plug in the cable yeah yeah this is the cable TTL cord so one end goes here, one end goes here, yeah, goes here, the flash goes here. Now this grip is not just a grip, inside are four size C batteries in addition to the four double A here. So you got a lot of fire, a lot of uh, power. So you can wait for the ready light, and then you can shoot. Yeah, you can shoot. You can bounce up, or you can bounce down for close up. You can tilt down, and this also you can still have some additional tilt. So this is a system. If you have the old camera, you don't have this connector, you can uh, dispense with this. And there's another PC cord here. And then you have the traditional PC cord. So you can plug it here. Yeah, the same will go. Let's see. Yeah, fire. Yeah. The fire. This flash works in three ways. You got manual, full power, half power. You got the normal auto. The the photo cell is inside the O. Inside the O of the Olympus, it measures the light. You got three settings. Or you can flip this around to TTL. 
then with the cord, you can use any of the aperture measured uh, exposure through the lens. So this is a flash system. Wow, incredible. Then they have the macro system, the bellows. I didn't, I didn't have the bellows here today. They have a bellows system. Okay, Mr. So Wu, thank you very uh, much for uh, this, uh, this experience of Olympus, something that uh, most of us have never known. And now we're so lucky to be able to get all this information. And uh, can't wait for the next one. And I think the next, the next episode, we'll, we'll see if Mr. Wu will be tempted to talk about German camera and lenses. Yeah. Such as Leica uh, and I don't even know the other German cameras. But thank you very much. And I want to give a shout out to YL Camera for having such um, facilities for us to use. And if you ever need to get any camera equipment, professional camera equipment, please come to YL Camera. Uh, they have a full supply of cameras, lightings, and other accessories for the videographer and for the professional photographer over out here in Malaysia. And I'm sure they'd be willing to ship to you any place in the world. Okay, till then, thanks.